In behalf of the family this morning, I want to say to you that uh, thank you for coming and for being here. Little do we know what presence means. We often think that we have to say something in order for it to be significant. But just to be there. And you remember in your life those that came probably don't remember what they said, but you remember they came. And so your presence today um, means a great deal. I was pastor of um, the grandmothers. I was telling the family a moment ago that um, this is my fifth service with this family. And um, I remember the funerals of both grandmothers, and then Robert and then Belinda. And the last one we had was with one of the grandmothers down in Jacksonville at the graveside. And um, so we're glad you're here this morning to be with them.
In John the 14th chapter, our Lord said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house were many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. But Thomas acted like he was in a, in a little doubt about that. When he said, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we go know the way? Where were you going? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let's pray together. Our Father, this morning, we come in, the, in these moments of such solidarityness and, and quietness and um, comprehension to even to have saturated into our life the renewing of eternal truths that we need in our journey. We thank you this morning for Brenda's life. We thank you for her family. We thank you for the way in which she touched the lives of her family as well as her friends. And, uh, and that won't be over. Those memories will live with us. And so we thank you for those memories that were made. And um, we've never realized how important they were until perhaps in the last few hours. Comfort us today. We pray as only you can, and we'll ever be grateful to you for it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. The other night, dear, as I lay sleeping, I dreamed I held you in my arms. When I awoke, dear, I was mistaken. So I hung my head and cried. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. Don't take my sunshine away. <clears throat> One Sunday, Linda came to me after the service and said, I would really like to come by and visit with you uh, if I could next week. And I said, well, fine. I said, just call the office and we'll set up a time and come by. So she did. She came by for something that I never dreamed that she'd come by for. Linda had always gone to church. After they joined our church, Sweat Memorial, they never missed. And so you would always think that, um, that everything was right. She came by and she sat with me and we talked for a minute and then she said, I've got something I need you to help me with. She said, Brother Freddie, I'm not a Christian. She said, I have gone through the process I've gone through all of the hoops, but I've never established a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I'm not saved. Could you help me with that? And I assured that I could. And there in the office that morning, Linda and I sat there and I was with Linda when she repented of her sins and invited Jesus into her life. Now that was just a short while before Linda died. She became so excited. Matter of fact, my wife and I were talking about it yesterday
that whole, pers her poor, her whole personality changed. We saw a whole new Linda. And I wanted to share that with you this morning. I remember we were going to celebrate a pastor. The church was going to celebrate a pastor Sunday. And Robert's mother was a great poet, as you know. She wrote a lot of poems. Matter of fact, in my library, I have a book that Linda put together for me of some of the poems she wrote. And so the the committee asked her if she would write a poem about her pastor, which was me. <laughs> I knew nothing about it. But that Sunday when we came to church and they handed out the bulletins, her poem that she wrote about her pastor was on the front of the bulletin. And she was there that morning. And I never will forget that. So there's some special moments that I've had with your family that I will ever appreciate for sure. But I do want to share with you just a moment from Scripture, um, something I think God would want us to be reminded of today. And it comes in the words of Paul that God used to pen these words to us. And Paul begins with it as a mystery. He said, I want to show you a mystery. And the mystery is this, that we shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed. Now that's the mystery. That we shall not all sleep. Meaning that there are those who feel that when death comes and we're buried or we're cremated, that, 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 that that's, that's it. 40, 50, 60 years of life or 90 years of life or whatever it may be, that that's the best it's going to be. I hope you believe that God has prepared for us something better than what this world can give us. I hope you understand that. And so Paul said, I want to show you a mystery. The mystery is that we have a hard understanding that we're not going to all just sleep. that it's just going to be over. But that the mystery is too that he's going to change us. To me, the word change in this context is one of the most beautiful words in the Bible. And I could not share with you this morning a more beautiful word than that. The reality that one day that that person who's a child of God will be changed, changed from their deformity, or changed from their blindness, changed from their stuttering of speech, changed from any impairment that they might have physically that impairs them moving quickly in life, that one day in Christ we're going to be changed. All that's going to be gone. Now Paul said, you may come and ask me, how in the world is God going to do that? It's just about coming and asking, Paul, how does God create this world and hang it on nothing and it exists and it moves and it does its thing.
we shall be changed. Even to the lost person who doesn't know Jesus. It would be good for you to think and to believe that the grave would be the end. Because that would be the easiest of transitions for the lost person just to be put away. But that's not what the scripture says. There's a reckoning changed. Changed. And Paul says it will come quickly, it'll come in a moment. It will come in the twinkling of an eye. This corruptible, this body that is corrupting each day, one day shall put on incorruption, that it will be forever it. This mortal that's terminated in so many ways, the mortal shall put on immortality where there will be the foreverness in it. So we come today to, in Brenda's service to, to celebrate that marvelous change. Um, that only Christ can give us in this life and eternity. He has to come to perform the change. So he's coming. He'll ring your doorbell. He'll knock on your door. He'll come. There's one day that God's coming for you. It is appointed that a man wants to die. The Bible says there's a day. There's a day. A day. I have a, a dear friend I grew up with. He and I are like brothers, and he and his wife live in Florida. And they're really having some health issues that is absolutely extenuating and difficult. I talked to him yesterday on the phone. And he made one of the most re unusual requests, and yet not unusual. His wife doesn't know him. They've loved each other for over 60 years. They went to high school together, married, Their life's been, been in the mix for years. This is the request he asked. Freddie, would you ask God today that he would take she and I together home tonight? Let us go together. So we prayed that last night. God didn't see the will to do that, but we prayed that. Because he understood something that we all should understand, that God has to come first for the change that Paul is referring to. So the Lord had to come for Brenda to bring about the change that he had promised. So what I want to say to you today is that, that God's doing what God said he would do. That God hasn't, God hasn't stepped out of his character. God hasn't stepped out of doing what he didn't promise to do. God's doing exactly what he said he would do. And he's changed. He's changed us. And he will change us. Meaning, thirdly, 
that that which we endure in this life is temporary. Now we act like much of it is eternal, that it will never go away. And we, we respond to it as it will never go away. I don't know what you're in today. But as a Christian, I'm telling you, it's temporary. One day it's going to be over. And he'll change us. What a wonderful promise that is. It's going to get better. Let me close this morning with one of the most wonderful stories I've ever heard. And maybe it will help us to get our arms around of what I'm trying to say. A young lady had contracted cancer. Oh, she was around 4 to 5, 50, something of that. And she was taking treatments, but the treatments didn't work. And sometimes that happens. It doesn't always happen, but it, sometimes it happens that, that um, nothing can touch the healing except God of the cancer, and it's just our time to go. So it seemed to have been her time to, to go quickly. So she called her pastor to her house. And they sat down, and he, he said, well, I'm, I'm glad you called. What, what, what can I help you with? She said, I want to talk to you about my service, how I want my funeral. He said, okay. So he took out his pencil and paper and began to write what she requested. And when there was a pause, and it seemed to be that they had gone through the service, he put his, started to put his pencil up, and she said, no, I'm not through. She reached over on a table and got a fork. A fork. She said, when I die, Pastor, and they have a visitation for me, and people come by and see me, I want you to put this fork in my hand. When I knew what she was talking about, I knew. Because my grandmother would cook dinner every Sunday for us as a family. And she did it the old way, that when we finished eating, she would come and my mother or others would help her take the plates off the table and the silverware, but most every Sunday, my grandmother would say, but keep your fork. Well, as a little boy, I knew that grandmother, wanting us to keep our fork, Grandmother was fixing to bring out something really good. And I was hoping it would be one of her coconut pies that I would need that fork for. So I knew exactly what the young lady was saying to her pastor. But he didn't get it. And he said, what about the fork? And she said, when they come by and see the fork in my hand, I want them to re be reminded that there's something better coming. I hope you get that this morning. There's something better in the grace of God coming. We will pray, and if you'll remain seated, there's one more song to be sung. Thank you, Father, for the truth of your word. Thank you for all that you mean to us and your faithfulness to us. Again, we thank you for Brenda. Thank you for her family and pray your blessings upon them. Help us all, Lord, to get to know you as our Lord and Savior before it's too late. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Didn't know today would be your last Knew that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk by through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight it's not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Always made my troubles feel so small and you were always there to catch me when I'd fall in a world where heroes come and go well God just took the only one I know so I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day When I see your face again But until then God must need another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside and I will hold on tight It's not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Singing hallelujah Just jealous of